Hello everyone. Hope everyone is doing well today. Good to be here again with you. Um, finished up last week the uh, my retreat in Northern California here. It was wonderful. We had a great time and what a special group of women. Just learned a lot myself and went away with, with great ideas and renewed enthusiasm. And I would encourage those of you who, um, who have not ever attended a retreat or gone away with even friends for a while, uh, you know, give it a try. It's, um, it's, a really, it's a really good time and a good time for renewal. Um, and, you know, for some getting a lot done, for others just taking that time away and, and relaxing and kind of getting back into the spirit of quilting. So that was a lot of fun. Um, good morning. I see Kathy and Bonnie. Good morning. And Laverne, good morning um, to all of you. Again, for those of you who may just be um, popping on for the first time, uh, remember to put your, you know, say hello in the chat box, maybe where you're from, um, another fun uh, piece of information about yourself or about anything you want. And also um, be sure to ask questions, um, give your own thoughts and ideas or experiences that you've had with what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, today it is we're going to be working with wool and it's for me it's very fun i enjoy taking time every now and then to work with the wool because it's quick it's fun it's it's an easy project and so today i hope that you'll see that as well so i'm going to drop the camera and we'll just go ahead and jump right in and get started with you know the prep work that we're going to need to do this little placemat um, it's a 20 inch round, it's a 12 inch round placemat from Wooly Lady. She has um, wonderful uh, products and patterns for that. So you can check that out. So here we go. You, you, if you bought the kit from the store, you receive this pattern, a Wooly Lady pattern new growth table mat. You, in a kit, you received the wool um, that you're going to be using for um, placement on the top of this. You'll get a 12 inch square of the turquoise, a 12 inch square of the black, and then the various sizes of squares for um, the leaves, the different types of leaves that are around here, and the threads, which are um, Wonderfill Pearl Cotton, and they're variegated. The, they are absolutely luscious, so um, I know you'll enjoy those. So on this pattern, if you, um, whether you had the kit or not, um, I found it very helpful that the supply, the size of the wool in the kit was indicated or what you would cut it to on the back. And she gave here what it was that you're cutting, the color, and the size and then very uh, simple instructions of how to make it and then a picture of the very simple stitches that we're going to be doing uh, to complete this project we won't be doing the stitching this week that's we're going to save that for next week then in the pattern itself she gives um, a sheet of expanded directions and tips for the um, for the project so anyway you get quite a bit of direction in the um, pattern itself I'm gonna put that aside for a minute and then you get uh, the pattern and on this one it's half the pattern you would flip it to the other side and then complete the pattern so we're gonna start with getting um, ready for the prep what you need to do um, to get everything moving, I'm going to get my iron on there. Uh, the first thing that she suggests doing, and I would too because wool shrinks, is that you are going to steam press your wool pieces that you received in your kit. And to do that, 
you can either use one of your spray bottles to um, mist it all over and then press it with an iron. And I do suggest, and she suggests in the pattern as well, that you would um, use a, a piece of muslin or white cloth over the top and not directly press your iron into the wool because it fat flattens it and gives the wool a bit of a sheen to it. So, and you don't really want that, I don't think. So, the first, so step number one, uh, steam press in whichever way, spraying it on or using steam in your iron. I just never put water in my iron. Uh, for me, that's a no-no uh, because it, uh, many of the irons leak. The, um, the water stretches the fabric as I'm pressing those things. If I need to press later, I'll use my spray bottle. And if it's a, a thick one, as I've said so many times before, I use the acorn fabric treatment to do that. So then step number two would be to trace the pattern. And you're gonna be tracing that using a light box. And I have a, a simple one here, just something for you to to um, see as I turn the light box on the pattern of on the front cover and the words show through but it's not too much of a problem and then you're going to be using freezer paper and freezer paper it has been said shrinks a little bit as well and whether that's true or not I'm, I'm not totally sure uh, but just in case I always iron my freezer paper one time before I use it and that is also with tracing the pattern on because I want it to be the exact size that it needs to be so I pressed um, freezer paper and this one is not big enough it's just a leftover piece but I wanted to show you um, how we're going to to do this so I pressed my freezer paper and then shiny, uh, there's one side that's shiny and there's one side that's dull. You want to be tracing on the dull side. So you lay it shiny side down and I use a mechanical pencil and then you're going to be tracing, you just simply trace on those lines around your pattern until you completely have it done. Then you're gonna turn that side around and you're going to match up the, um, the sides and so that you can, so that part of the pattern is down here and then you would trace the other side. So flip that paper over. So that is how the tracing of that happens on the pattern. Let me move this out of the way. And you can see where I have traced it on to my freezer paper. And then I'm going to rough cut that out. Then I press my pattern to my wool background. And this is the turquoise. So then you will cut exactly on the lines. So I'm going to remove this outside, pretending that I have cut that here with you on camera. So now I have my, my pattern um, on my freezer paper. And normally, let me explain what I've done here. I looked at this pattern very carefully and decided that I could trace it just as it was and I didn't have to trace each separate thing um, all over the um, the freezer paper like I normally would because I'm going I looked at it and said you know I can cut it apart into the pieces that I need and if you go back to the pattern you can see that the turquoise is the first piece that you um, cut out then um, the next piece is going to be this underside um, kind of a yellowish green um, piece 
and then you have this large piece and then the rest are individual pieces um, for example the leaves and these leaves here and the center circles are separate so I looked at the pattern and decided that I could just draw it as it was and I now I'm in the process of I'm going to cut around this piece because that's the next piece that I'm going to um, work from. So I'm, I'm simply now removing my paper and I'm going to use a, um, got all my scissors in different places. And be sure to use a paper scissors to cut your freezer paper and not your um, good scissor good um, fabric scissors for that and now I'm simply going to cut around that large circle and one of the things you know having taught school for a long time and and taught little ones how to use their scissors and cut uh, you want to stay within the sweet spot and you also want to turn your paper and not your scissors. Um, if you cut all the way to the edge of your scissors, you get those sharp cuts that happen. Um, you know, I don't know if you've seen little, you know, kindergartners or first graders um, cut out paper, but they have those jagged um, spots or lines on the paper and uh, that kind of gets in the kind of gets in the way so now I can rough cut around each of these leaves and you have your you can cut all of those leaves out which I have done um, here I first rough cut them. Let me get these out of the way. I rough cut them and then I press them to the correct wool um, with that rough cut on it. And again, now I'm using my Karen K. Buckley scissors, which I really like uh, with the serrated edge. And again, you're you are cutting through and you are turning the paper and not your scissors. And you're keeping it in that center sweet spot and you keep cutting around exactly on um, the paper. And when I talk about the sweet spot, I'm talking about this area right in here and on this little one it's kind of nice because it shows Karen's name is right here and about where her name starts and where her name ends is what I consider the sweet spot of the scissors and as you're cutting around um, that makes it you know you get smooth cuts and now you're cutting directly on the line all right, so I have cut out one of those leaves completely and I've cut out the small leaves. And now with this, what I can do is I can place this and press it. Let me get this out of the way. And I will put it freezer paper side down into the center of my wool. Um, I do not have my um, cloth here, so I'm going to try to press that without hitting the wool too much because I, I really don't want to. And so I'm pressing the freezer paper onto the wool. And now I can take and uh, completely cut around this right on that line. The next step that I will do 
is I will cut this out as well right on that line all right so that I can then take this circle and put it onto my next piece and I will cut it out again and then I can cut individually each of these small circles and each of these leaves out of the correct color which it shares in the um, pattern for you to do. So this week really what um, I'm going to have you do is trace your pattern Iron it to first to your turquoise piece. Cut that out. Then you are going to, once you've got that cut out, you are going to very carefully cut your, um, cir your large circle out of the inside of this pattern. And then you're going to cut this um, out around then you'll go back remove your freezer paper you're going to cut around this circle the inside you are going to put that onto the um, the kind of a lime green um, piece on here you will cut that out and then you then you can cut the individual pieces. So I was able to draw that complete pattern and cut it apart that way. Let me check with the questions to see if you have any questions up to this point um, with that. There it looks like. All right. Good morning, everyone. It's really nice to, to see all of you and, and from East Coast to West Coast. It's kind of nice. And a couple of you are saying you love working with wool. Me too. It's, it's a lot of fun. Um, all right, I'm not seeing, can you just buy the pattern? Um, I have a, a huge stash. Yes, you, you can, um, I believe, buy the pattern. But you know what? I'm going to ask uh, Kristen to answer that for real. Uh, um, so check, please check back and on here in the chat box. Uh, BN says she uses um, a serial for tracing the lines of a pattern onto material. It's a wax-free tracing paper. Uh, that's another option and a good way. I have not particularly used that, um, but I just may have to try it. Oh, um, Kristen has said, we don't sell just the pattern in the quilt store, but it's available on the Wooly Lady website. So there we go. Uh, we do have the Karen K. Buckley scissors. Um, they're serrated. They're wonderful. They keep, um, you know, regular fabric from fraying. All right. Okay. All right. I'm not seeing. So pattern directly from Wooly Lady. Um with that so but the the kit is really is um really affordable and nice if you if you want to uh, tackle this but this is true of any wool pattern that you use probably the only difference in this one and others is that you would sometimes you have to individually uh, cut you know trace these out in rows or whatever onto your freezer paper and but this pattern just happened to lend itself that I could just trace it as it was and then cut it apart so then this week do cut out your your circles and your leaves and the inside these small um 
circles here need to also be cut out and you have the um, wool in your kit um, that you are to use it's also listed on the back of the pattern so all of that is is pretty wonderful um, just don't forget about this circle here in the middle that you are also going to be cutting out so those circles just made this pattern particularly um, easy to do once you have all of your pieces cut out I left the paper on for now even though these are very distinctive uh, patterns um, and normally um, I but I normally leave the the paper on them so I can see what they are for for reals and then um, I want to talk about um, connecting the 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 different circles together and I find the center of my my piece here I will fold it both ways because I want to get those circles on there correctly and I will use a, a piece of chalk I'll use a pin something that will indicate for me what the center of this uh, turquoise piece is and then I traced onto the Apple Web Plus uh, there are several different ways that you can do this. You can use glue, um, a washable, uh, you know, a glue stick. I will oftentimes use the acorn glue, uh, Roxanne's, whatever, whatever you have. She suggests in uh, the paper, you know, a couple of different ideas. But I really like the select Apple Plus Web Plus over some of the other um, possibilities that we've used because this is really, really thin stuff. So there is, and I don't know if you can see it on camera um, too well, but there is a fine, fine, I'm going to get this off. It's a little web of glue is what it is. And so it's it's very sheer once it's in. It needles very well if, if you get that um, inside of that. So I am going to put it onto the back side of my, my piece. Once I have cut my circle out, then I will put iron this to the back side of my piece of, or not even not uh, to the back side of my um, wool and there's really not a back side I have traced the circle and I am going to cut um, about an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch inside that circle um, after I have pressed it on and this is where where misty fuse is just this sheer piece when you buy it it comes in a sheet that has no paper. It's just the, um, and I and I do love Misty Fuse and have used it for years. And then Quilter Select came along with this one that has the paper on the side. And I liked the, the stability that the paper gives me when I'm working with this because I can press it to the, you know, to the back side. I'm going to cut that circle out. Then I'm going to press it to the back side of this. So um, let me just do that real quickly. So I'm going to go about a quarter, uh, you know, about an eighth of an inch inside because I don't want it to go all the way to the edge. That gives me room to stitch when I'm getting ready to stitch. But it also holds it in place. You do not feel it in there. It is so wonderfully lightweight. So I have cut that um, Apple Web Plus out. And so in the circle, once I have cut it out of there, as you can see, it's going to be a bit shorter than the inside. It's going to be shorter. Um, on the inside of that circle so that I can put that 
and iron it to the turquoise. I will do the same for this circle. I'll do the same for this circle. The rest of these are small, so I'm probably going to use the acorn glue and I will position them using my pattern as my guide. So for next week, then, if, if you have your pattern cut out, all your pieces um, glued down in, in place or are positioned in place with the Apple Plus web or whatever, a glue stick, um, Elmer's glue, anything that's washable, um, but try not to get it within where we're going to be stitching in the seam line. Uh, the other products do not needle real well. The Misty Fuse, the Apple Web Plus does a good job of that. Um, heat and Bond Light is what the Woolly Lady suggests in there, and Heat and Bond Light works uh, well too. Um, uh, others can just, um, someone, I think Carol just put up there that she uses applique plant pins and um, before she does her stitching and embellishing on that. So next week is about the stitching and the embellishment. This week it'll give you a chance to um, get your wool prepped and put onto your um, back and then we will attach the black underside that you see here and we'll talk about doing that and making those stitches next week. So hopefully let me go back and just double check um, because a number of you popped in. Um, yes and um, Kristen has answered some of the some of the questions about the scissors etc. Um, This is really a fun project, and you're going to see how easy wool is to, to needle um, and stitch through. It's just absolutely wonderful. So if you haven't done anything with wool, this is a great, um, Alex has popped in and said wool is super fun and easy to stitch on. Agreed. It is. It's really a lot of fun. Um, it, and it's a nice project sometimes to do in between lots of piecing and other things that we're doing. Um, heat and bond light is mentioned again, absolutely. So um, the applique pins work just fine. Um, I I simply like the others because they're flatter. And so it is have fun prepping. What do you need to do to wool if you don't buy the kit? The same thing, Susan. You simply take your wool and steam press it so that any shrinkage happens. So again, steaming it with your iron or steaming it by spraying the wool um, with that Mr. Spray or any spray bottle and, and pressing it with a pressing cloth. And that will take care of that with the um, freezer paper. I press it first um, for those who say that freezer paper does shrink. Um, I don't want to take any chances of my pattern not being uh, the correct size, so I will also shrink my freezer paper. Uh, do your tracing on the freezer paper with um, on the dull side, and then um, cut everything out in the circle layers as I we walked through, and get everything prepped and onto your uh, turquoise background um, piece of, of fabric and then next week we're going to tackle the stitching and putting that down and doing some embellishments on that and I am really um, looking forward to um, walking this this path with you and if you have any questions again please go to the forum put up your your photos and pictures if you uh, have that ability to to get into the forum if you're a subscribed member otherwise you can all also email them to me and i will share them next week on the um here on the platform that we're using 
And I look forward to uh, working with you again on this wool project Wooly from Wooly Lady uh, next week. You guys have an absolutely wonderful week. Enjoy whatever it is that's coming your way. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.